So good evening, everyone. Welcome to the webinar. So today, uh, we are mainly, you know, focusing on this webinar to learn about the life of medical students in Belarus. So along uh, with us, we have Agrani Hagunuge, who's a student at Grodno State Medical University. And we have Tarushi Fernando, who's a student at Viteb State Medical University. So we will be, you know, speaking with them and then getting all our doubts cleared regarding the university, how are their curriculum, the day-to-day -day expenses. And also at the last minute, we had Ms. Marina from the IMC office, uh, Grodno region also joining with us. So she's also here with us for today's uh, webinar. So we'll be starting it. So. First of all, I would uh, like to invite Tarushi Fernando to introduce about herself and then we'll, you know, go on with it. Tarushi? Uh, hello, Ashita. Hi. Hi, Tarushi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. So I think all you guys uh, heard her. Can you all please raise your hands up if you all could hear Tarushi? You all did, right? Great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay. So, Tarushi, if you can give a small introduction about yourself, which school you are uh, from yes. and everything. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Tarushi Fernando, and I'm, uh, I studied uh, at uh, St. Jude's Convent, Colombo 7. And, uh, Tarushi, I can't see your camera. Can, I, can you on and just show your face for them? Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> sure. There's something wrong with this camera, I think. Camera? It's all yeah. right, Tarushi. Then go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, so now I'm going for the second year. And I just finished my first year at VSMU. Uh, so talking about VSMU and Belarus, first of all. Belarus, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a really safe country for girls. If you have any doubts, like, don't worry. It's really safe for everyone. Like, uh, for example, if you go out at around about 12, there's no worries. No one will come to approach a foreigner. So no worries. They Tarushi, uh, so I'll just, uh, you know, go ahead with some questions for you. I have just yeah, certain yeah. questions, common questions. So Tarushi, okay. first of all, speaking about what were the benefits and the help you got from IMC, you know, before going over, yes, you know, to yes. VSM. Just IMC. highlight those main points, you know, inform. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you can remember, we went uh, during COVID period, yes. like the yes. quarantine period. So within about a month, a short period, uh, uh, IMC, uh, they did a great job with arranging the tickets and uh, even the offer letters and everything. Uh, so uh, we, uh, when we needed to pay the semester fee, first semester fee, they managed to send us the offer letter and the bank letter. So we had no rush to like, go to the bank and like wait sit there for a long time just uh for the requirements they sent us uh, like within a short period like they really did a great job um, thank you thank you really tarushi. Yeah. yeah and uh and, tarushi uh, yeah about, tell me yeah, yeah talking ahead. about uh like when we like when we reached better it was like there were Dr. Dinesh, he came to pick us and uh, with the on arrival visa and everything, they were really helpful. Like, or else we even didn't know the language. So I don't know. We are really thankful for that. Yeah. So the other thing is Tarushi, as you, you know, mentioned in the beginning itself, most of um, the students who are about to come to Belarus and students who have the idea of coming to Belarus or VTEPS, no, yeah. Most commonly, the parents and the students, mainly girls, mm -hmm. they are asking about the safety in Belarus. What do you think about it, Tarush? The safety nurse for girls, the security and everything. Safety is spot on. To be honest, you don't need to worry about anything. Like uh, even the IMC staff, 
back in Belarus, back in Vitebs, they are always there to safeguard us. And the Sri Lankan students, the majority is us. So there are seniors who will be there to take care of us when we need them all the times. Even the country is safe for girls because uh, actually no one will approach us. Like no one will come and talk to us just like in Sri Lanka, strangers will come and ask for roads and stuff, right? Back in Belarus, no one will come to us like that. So no worries. You, it's a really safe country for girls. We have been there for like about a year now. Like I'm done with my first year. So like nothing happened to me within this year. Nothing weird or like something to be like taken care of. I never called Dr. Dinesh regarding some security problems. I never did. So yes. I think it's really safe for girls. Thank you, Tarushi. So the other uh, main thing is Tarushi, you know, uh, they, are, uh, they are telling certain students that, you know, their main, uh, you know, next uh, factor, or next thing, which is, you know, you know, disturbing them is they're like how to cope up with the, you know, the, the uh, curriculum and how to do these extracurricular activities and everything. Yeah. So just a small idea about it. Like, do they always have to, you know, keep on studying without doing any other extra? No, it's not like, or, you know, just yeah, sure. insight about it. Yes, uh, basically, like the way that we studied, if you did locals, uh, it's a bit different for you. But even if you did uh, London's or Excel, Cambridge, it, it will be a bit different for you, the curriculum. But you don't have to worry about it because it's like uh, you have to study the daily things. Like you have to study the part that you have to cover and then go for the Plus, that's it. You can do all the extracurricular activities that you did back in school in the university also. Like uh, if you are an athlete, uh, they have football, basketball, cricket, badminton, chess, and all sort of things that you did back in school. And even like extracurricular, like if you like uh, the school events, like you had the uh, uh, Aurudu festival, Christmas, and like that. We also have back in uni, we have SL night, Precious night, Diwali, Aurudu, Christmas, and like faculty. Day. We have like a lot of things actually. It's like it's you yeah. have to balance your education plus your social life. That's yes. it. You don't have to worry about it. Thank you, Tarushi. So the other thing also, uh, Tarushi, uh, what they're asking is, uh, how how is the curriculum at Vitebs? How are the classrooms? How are the lecturers? Like, is it too tough, the subjects? How is it? Uh, for the first year, the basic subjects that we have is anatomy, uh, physics, biology, and uh, Russian, like that. We have some subjects. So about 10 we have, uh, but the main subjects are like uh, biology, physics, and anatomy. So for anatomy, if I take example, if I take anatomy, anatomy, you, uh, you will get uh, the class timetable. The first day you don't have to study because you don't know how to study. The lecturer will let you know how to study and come to a class. And then you, when you come like, prepare yourself and come, they will ask you some questions, some basic questions about the lesson and they will give you a mark. So, uh, and then uh, end of that period, they will have a control. Then you have to study all the classes that you did and then face the control. Uh, that's the basic thing that is happening. So end of the semester, you have to collect all the credits. For each subject, the ones uh, for the first semester, you have eight credits. So you had to collect eight credits from the relevant teacher. Uh, so if you have all the controls and no absent classes, uh, there will be no problem for you uh, like about getting the credit. It is not that tough, but you had to study anyway. That's it. 
Okay, thank you, Tarushi. So the other thing is what the uh, the other main uh, thing, the question or the other main uh, factor which the students want to know is the upcoming students. How are the hostels or how are the apartments? Like are the apartments up to you know proper condition and uh, how how is the what do you say from here when you're going from Sri Lanka itself to IMC arrange an apartment or a hostel for y'all? How does it go? How does it work? uh hostels uh, you uh, there's a block you have to share so basically you will have uh, uh, a block with five people so uh, there's a two seater and a three seater room uh, so uh, the washrooms and everything is really good uh, even the kitchen you have to share it with your blockmates but uh, it's really nice uh, even in uh, the hostel uh, the main thing is you have a lot of people to like communicate and stuff and uh, if i talk about uh, apartments i stay in apartment so uh, uh, apartments are like really clean and nice when uh, when you go there uh, if you ask for an apartment uh, dr dinesh and the imc staff uh, have already arranged you one so uh, what you have to do is uh, uh they will like you have to do nothing like they will take you there and uh, that's it the condition is really good the apartment conditions yeah. if you don't like it you have to like you know uh, you can inform dr, dr. dinesh, dinesh. Yeah, yeah he will definitely change it for you guys and the other thing is tarushi how are the living cost at bitabs uh, yeah like i'm going to ask that question from agrani as well like you know overall but i'm just asking personally how is it for you tarushi do does it like you know go a lot like do you always eat from all these outside fast food restaurants or how does it work uh, tarushi uh yes uh, uh talking about the expenses uh if you like uh, travel by bus uh for one way you have to pay 80 kbx that means at approximately about uh 80 rupees sri lankan rupees but if you take a taxi like every day the cost will be high so mm. anyway then your parents have to send you more money uh so better to take the bus than taking taxi every day because uh, you can take a bus card for like 30 rubles then you can use it for every bus yeah thank you tarushi so guys if there are any uh, questions you all want to ask from tarushi you all can unmute your mics and you know get it cleared from her or if you all don't feel like you know directly asking you all can drop a message in the chat box which i could you know convey to tarushi i'm giving you all around 10 minutes time if you all can drop me uh, the messages whatever questions oh, you all want to ask from her you all can go ahead if you want to know about the food expenses yeah you can go ahead uh, tarushi but uh two weeks like uh, uh for groceries you might spend around 60 rubles how much is that in sri lankan uh, uh, rupees tarushi in sri lankan rupees that will be around uh around uh, give me a minute yeah hold on i'll check it now the currency rate is how much is it it's 60 rubles right yes yeah so 60 rubles for two weeks is would be around sri lankan rupees 355 rupees so it's just 355 rupees for two weeks right tarushi yes yes yeah so it's, it's more weeks. convenient and you know uh, the living standards are more affordable i think than sri lanka also <laughs> yes so it's actually like uh, spending eight uh, eight thousand five hundred is really worth actually more okay. than you if you like go out and eat you have to spend at least for twenty rubles for one meal so, yeah so there are some questions uh, tarushi yeah. i have a question from uh nada right yeah nada are you all facing any kinds of economic crisis like money transactions like so i think imc did help you all with that as well right the union pay card yes. and everything yes. yeah so if you can yes. go ahead regarding that uh, nada is asking it uh 
the Sri Lankan banks, they had uh, like put some sanctions that we had uh, like, we can only withdraw like 150 rubles, something like that. So we contact the INC office because it was a bit hard for us to manage with 150 rubles per a month, like uh, per a week, per week it's like. So we contacted the Dr. Dinesh and uh, he arranged a union pay card. So uh, that was really helpful and we got the cards and the, the limit is not there in the union pay card we can withdraw mm. like any amount yeah even the dollar cards were blocked so the union pay cards are the only way that we could withdraw money yeah okay thank you tarushi so we are getting a lot of questions so the next question is from uh what's his name this he's like Okay, so this is I can answer your question. Don't we really need A level knowledge to continue the studies? So, obviously, if you have a plan of coming back to Sri Lanka and working as a doctor, you definitely need your A levels, right? Tarushi, I think for you all to yes. be told the same thing, you need to have minimum two C's and one S if you want to be a doctor and work in Sri Lanka. But if you really don't have an idea of coming back to Sri Lanka and work as a doctor, you don't need your A levels, you can go through the CPU pathway the Canadian pre-university pathway, it's known as the Canadian A-level, something similar to A-level. You can do that and then you can, you know, start medicine. That is nine months program. This is, I can uh, let you know more about it. So another question, Masra, uh, she wants to know about the weather. Is it manageable, Tarushi? Uh, yeah, even I got that message. Yeah, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yeah, Masra, it's like uh, you're going in for the autumn actually so it's when the weather gets a bit cold so the body will literally like it will um, adjust to the climate okay so don't worry the weather is bearable the first days and then when you have your clothes winter coats and everything your jerseys and stuff uh, the weather is actually bearable. You don't have to worry about it. Thank you, Tarushi. And the heaters are there. Yeah, I think, yeah. So the other thing is, uh, we have a question from Kanishka. This is a main question, not only from Kanishka, from, from overall everyone, even I want to ask from, the, from our granny as well. So Tarushi, are you all affected by any war? Uh, no, uh, we are not. <laughs> Because we are in Belarus. If you all can explain it to that, because people are thinking that you all are also getting, you know, all this violent uh, bombing and all these things happening near your university and everything. If you can, you know, elaborate more about that, Tarushi. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, Belarus is like is sharing borders with Ukraine and Russia, right? So we are near uh, Russia. We are sharing the border with Russia. We tapes is sharing the border with Russia. So, uh, but. The war is between Russia and Ukraine. We are living in Belarus. Nothing is affecting us. So what they are doing is they are just protecting their border. That's the only thing that they can do. And uh, for now, like nothing has affected us. Like uh, nothing at all. Like you even don't get to like see a war tank. Nothing like that. So don't worry like okay don't worry thank you <laughs> so the other question is from adnan he's like i heard that the cards can get de declined when withdrawing dollars from the atms in belarus so how do you manage mm -hmm. with that tarushi <laughs> uh the cards they are declined because we are taking money uh exceeding the credit limit so then we have to call, like send an email to the relevant bank, uh, asking them to uh, reactivate the card. Yeah, okay. That's the way. That thank you, thank you, uh, Tarushi. And uh, Himanta, uh, yeah, I can answer your question. You're asking is physics required for the entry or is biochem and max enough? So physics is required. In A-levels, you need to have biochem and physics if you want to enter into Belarus uh, Himanta. Okay. So guys, is that 
the only questions you all have for Tarushi, or do you all have any more questions? Shall I invite our next speaker, Miss Agrani? Do you all have any more questions? To how do we pay our semester fees? Because we can't withdraw a large amount of money from the bank at the moment from Adnan. Tarushi? Uh, what we are doing is uh, we are requesting the bank uh, mm -hmm. to give us currency or what you can do is you can uh, ask uh, for a bank letter and... IMC does prepare that, yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right. And then, uh, Mohammed, you're asking me about when our next batch is. So currently, we are having our next batch going on. So we had our first batch uh, who went uh, on 31st, that's yesterday. And we have another batch going on the 11th. So if you are about to apply, you have to apply as soon as possible because we are out of, you know, we are getting out of seats so quickly. We currently have only 10 seats remaining for this September's intake. So guys, is that all the questions you all have for uh, Tarushi? Can we move on to the next speaker of the day? Right? All right. So Tarushi, thank you so much. You can be online. So I okay, think we can move on to our, our next uh, speaker. So Agrani, are you here? Hello. Can you yeah. Hi. Hear me? Hi, Agrani. Hi. So, guys, can you all uh, hear Agrani? If you can hear her, please, uh, you know, raise your hands up. All right. Great. Okay. So, Agrani is uh, a student who's almost, you know, completing her third batch at, you know, she's same at uh, Belarus. Grodno State Medical University. Tarushi was from Vitebs, and then we have Agrani. She's from Grodno. So Agrani, the same questions which I asked from Tarushi. How are you all uh, as a third year? You might know more more about you know Belarus and Grodno. How mm -hmm. are the classrooms and how are the curriculum and uh, the the basic stuffs? What did IMC do for you all? You know at the beginning and everything. If you can elaborate it, Agrani, it would be more helpful. Sure. Hi guys, first of all. Uh, Granny, so can you show your you... face if you don't mind for just a minute for this time? <laughs> okay. Sure. So guys, Am I I... can you all see our granny guys? If you all can see, just put a thumbs up or something. So I will also know that. All right, great. great. Thank, you. thank you guys. Thank okay. you. Our granny, you can switch it off. No issues. Sure. Uh, so when we speak of the curriculum in Belarus, it's very direct, like at the start of the year, you're given what subjects you have to take in the year and the hour of class goes, when the exams will be held. And like when we speak classrooms wise, it's usually, uh, it is in sets of groups, like each and every group has at least maybe 12, 13 students, or it could even be less such as 10 or nine students. It actually depends on how many students there are in your batch. And of course, all the educational materials are provided by the university itself. And so it's actually, to be honest, if you follow the day-to-day -day stuff and you are on top of your game, it's very easy when you come towards the final examination. All right, thank you. Thank you, Agrani. And the other thing is, Agrani, uh, they are they're asking, since you are in your third year, like, are you into the practicals yet or not yet? Uh, not, we are doing, like, since the first year, we did have, we started initially with the basic practicals. It was okay. like, so how is your basic uh, practicals going on, Agrani? Can you all, like, can you explain it to our students how interesting it is and what have you all started at the basic? So initially, when we first started manipulations, it was uh, using with the help of, uh, you know, models like structures, which were present, like the incisions of certain stuff, and then using uh, how to give an IV, uh, then how to do an IEM, which is an intramuscular. So certain things as such were initially taught. So when you come towards the uh, final phase of your third year, you are being allowed to go visit the patients and communicate with them, uh, check out them, like see their auscultations, palpitations, then uh, percussions and everything. 
communicate and get a basic case history report as i think uh, dr burhan will further elaborate on it uh, things as such so it's actually the initial stage we start towards the first years all right great thanks agrani and the same question which uh, the students asked from tarushi i just wanted to ask from you also uh, since you are in the third year i'm just asking aren't you doing any other extra curricular activities are you only into studies agrani or what is it to be honest i am a bit of a book bookworm to be really honest <laughs> being frank okay, but like no anyone anyone who wants to go out of their way like there are so many clubs which are present for dancing cricket like in the past we had uh, the grotna premier league was present then for those who like rugby even girls played rugby the boys or so if you have any extracurricular interests which are present of course the sri lankan community over there as well as the university has so many events going on which you can take part definitely okay so agrani there is a uh, question sisi i will ask your question you know finally when she's done so the other thing is agrani you stay in a hostel or apartment i stay in a hostel, hostel. all three so, years i've stayed yeah okay so uh mainly the parents and the students certain girls and also boys too they just want to know how is the hostel how is the hostel conditions at grotno and what about the what do you say the laundry the kitchen how does it go on and everything if you can elaborate it agran yeah so there are three hostels at the grs in you so out of them two uh, hostels go according to the block system as tarushi earlier spoke of and the rest is uh, it's like there's a lot of russian students it's a very diverse community which stays in the other hostel so speaking of hostel number 2 in which uh, mostly a lot of sri lankan students are residing in just as hostel number 4 which is present in grsmu so there we have the block system in which there are around 4 to 5 rooms which are either two seaters or three seaters which uh, has a community kitchen available as well as two washrooms two showers and laundry wise it's there for the entire building in the basement where there are a sufficient number of working washing machines which are present so you just have to go there and make sure you're like if you're a person who has a timetable it's very easy for you to live in a hostel actually like even the community kitchen which you have you can go cook whenever you want because uh, even the cookers are working from 6 am in the morning till 12 pm in the evening so it's very easy to work and i actually think a hostel is a way better experience than an apartment to be honest all right thank you agrani so guys uh, the other thing is agrani i just wanted to know they are asking like uh, how how is you know the iemc office in grotno and uh, about miss marina and how are the staffs in iemc belarus you know are they helpful to you in your you know in any emergency situations or anything just a little bit about it and we have miss marina also on board she's yeah. going to speak next that's the main thing to be honest uh, both miss marina as well as dr slava they are like they are whenever you need for me personally they, they've been a great help as a student since the first day i entered the country to be honest till the last time i left they've always been there for me and like i remember when the first years came last year we had quite a few emergencies which happened like we had to call a phone uh, ambulances at the middle of the night due to certain conditions and you can call them at 2 am in the morning <laughs> or at any time and they'll just come rushing to you whenever uh, it's needed for them actually to be honest they are kind of like a set of second parents for you over there because whenever they are there like i have a feeling that i do not need to be scared of anything because they are there so in case of any emergency they are just one call away and even the senior students community who are present over there they make sure that you are doing well or you are doing fine and even the seniors along with uh, miss marina and dr slava are all over there to make sure you are doing fine and okay all right thank you thank you agrani and the other thing is agrani what they wanted to know is uh, 
when 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 are the what do you say when are the vacations in grodno and uh, the other main thing is two things when is the vacation in grodno and when can you come to sri lanka and all the other main thing is it's about the classrooms they want to know how are the classrooms in uh, grodno how are the lecturers you know are they friendly and everything uh, so first question if you are addressing it first uh the vacations we have two semesters the first is the autumn semester and the second is the spring semester so for the autumn semester we are usually done by january that is when they have their christmas because uh it's a bit different than the christmas in sri lanka like we usually celebrate it over here in december 25th it's a bit different over that we celebrate it over there in january so after that after christmas the next two weeks within that time you have your first a uh, semester finals for the autumn and after the finals are done you have around 7 days of vacation time and then once again uh, you start your spring semester in february and you finish it around uh, end of june but for the second years it's a bit different because they go till the time limit of july first week so after that till the first of september you have holiday so I think the most number of days you have as holidays is after the spring semester, yeah, which we are yeah. back home right now. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Agrani. So the other thing is they wanted to know how are the classrooms, how are the lecturers at Grodno, yeah. So the equipments, the facilities available, and everything. Yeah, all the facilities itself, everything is almost over there. Like, uh, I remember when we were studying anatomy, we could go, uh. find the kadavas whenever we wanted to even on saturdays there were days which were open for the students to specifically go and study and then when we speak of the classroom atmosphere as i said there are usually students in groups of 10s or 12s so the individual attention of the teacher is present always and i think uh, we are a bit different than we smu in our studies i guess because yeah, like every yeah. day we do have examinations It's a bit different. Tarushi, Tarushi online, right? So y'all don't have exams every day, right? At Viteps, Tarushi. Uh, it's not like exams, but we have daily rating. Ah, daily rating. Ah, yeah. Right. So yeah, same thing. So these daily ratings actually uh, count towards when you're going for your final examination mark. So it's like you have to make sure you're on top of your game a bit to make sure yeah. you can score well in your finals. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Agrani. And there are certain questions, Agrani, which they want to ask from you, and as well, which I can answer too. Uh, Nada is asking, can we see her hostel? But currently, she's in Sri Lanka. But <laughs> but if you can uh, just elaborate it, how are the space and everything, Agrani? Yeah. Um. Uh, I think hostel wise, or uh, you can see now it's in the system of blocks. So. there are specific blocks on each floor so when you enter to the block there are two doors the opening and the closing which you are not usually allowed to close so there are usually two rooms of in one block this is there are two rooms which are two seaters two rooms uh, which are three seater so uh, according to like the first three seater and the first two seater they are allocated with one uh, washroom and one shower and the rest all the other four rooms have to share one uh, community kitchen which is present and usually the cleaning as such is done by us or sometimes we do have staff to come and help us out which is a great relief at times other times we do it on our own and like it's mainly throwing out the garbage or things as such which we do on like a weekly basis according to the room number all right okay thank you and the other thing is uh, who is this tisaru tisaru you are asking are we allowed to do part time jobs but uh, that is not allowed because uh, you know you all are studying medicine medicine is something where you all have to give your 100% concentration to it and you know study but you all can do you know we have certain students who you know bake cakes as a part time job and you can do you know any any things which interest you but you cannot do part time jobs at belarus and we have who is this uma uma she is asking about the internship at grodno any idea you have about that agrani 
uh, I think if I'm right, I'm not exactly sure. Okay. Only a certain number of students are selected for the internship. Like the university chooses you according to your credit score. I'm not yeah. exactly sure. All right. But, I, uh, I can elaborate on that if yeah. you want. Or when we have the Q&A session with Mr. Amila, he would sort it out. And also Kanishka is asking you a question. Was language and barrier an issue for you? Because she's like... So many people, you know, some people don't know English, right? At uh, Belarus, because honestly speaking, they speak a lot of Russian language. So she's like, didn't you have any uh, barrier with the language, Agrani, when you went re uh, newly? And yeah. Uh, yeah, it is a barrier to be really honest. But like in uh, GRSMU, they do provide you with uh, Russian classes, which are compulsory. And of yeah. course, let's be honest, uh, even these, like, even after Russian classes, there are quite a number of chances we still use the google translators to get yeah. our way across but it's not a huge issue as you uh, as long as you're you know comfortable with using the app and uh, making sure you know the basic words to get around you'll be fine yeah okay thank you and then we have a question from who is this i okay how do you manage your studies do you refer any books like how how does it, how do you do it agrani uh, as I said earlier, the university does provide you with some study material, but of course, it's always better to go out of your way and research for stuff. So, because now, if you are a student who's studying anatomy currently, they do give you a book on anatomy and they also provide you with letters, which has more information present in it. So, it's always better to go and research as much as possible because medicine at the end of the day is a very vast subject. So it's always better to read more books to increase your knowledge because uh, with time it will be very valuable to you. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Agrani. And the next question we had was, do we open bank accounts in Belarus Bank? Uh, do you or you want uh, She's like, out, can you or... would you be able to open like can we open bank accounts in Belarus excuse me I'm getting a yeah. call yeah it's okay yeah definitely you can open bank accounts there are so many Sri Lankan students who have uh, Belarusian currency bank accounts as well as bank accounts for the USD it's totally fine they'll love you Yeah, so there's another question also, Agrani, do students get together after class and teach each other, like, you know, the past year students and all? Uh, I remember since the last year, yes, they did start it off. Uh, for the, like, when the juniors had the anatomy examinations, which were, which were held in December, the senior students did get together and, like, one student per time, they uh, spoke on several chapters which were present and helped out the Jew. So, yeah, Agrani, um, Ranaja is asking, can I know about the hostels in Vitebs? Yeah, Ranaja, so hostels in Vitebs and Grodno do vary. So, it's something similar, but because Vitebs also, you know, hostels are similar to Grodno, where you will have units and you will have uh, certain, you know, rooms where you all will be sharing everything. But uh, Tarushi is staying in an apartment, that's what. So, are there any more questions you all want to ask from Agrani? Anything related to Grodno, anything related to the services offered by IMC, anything you all can just drop a message in the chat box. I'm giving you all five minutes time. How long do you study after class? Yeah, so to answer Anaj's question, um, the hostel facilities provided in Grodno and Vitebs, now both of these universities are state universities. So they will have the same, uh, I would say the same architecture, right? But the division of students are different to Grodno to Vitebs. 
So in Grodno, you will have, um, there are two hostels. There's this international hostel and a Russian hostel. And to, uh, there, there are, there, there's a hostel where you will have, uh, where you will find five rooms in one block. So generally around 10 students, uh, I'm sorry, four, uh, four rooms will be there and then 10 students will be sharing one block. Whereas in Vitids, you will have only five students sharing one block. Uh, but uh, it, it differs. But my personal advice is if you are looking at uh, going to Vitids, right? Uh, for you to look at a private apartment, because mostly uh, Vitids uh, hostels are quite crowded due to the high demand for the university. And we believe uh, if, if you are a student who can adapt to uh, you know, changes of uh, population and all of that, then I would say the hostel would be the best place for you to go. But if you are not a student who can manage under a lot of noise and, you know, when sharing basis comes to a problem, I believe an apartment would best suit for you. So I think if you want to decide whether it's a hostel or uh, if it's an apartment you would want to go to, just genuinely speak to your counselor and he will give you a very positive feedback based on your personality and based on what we think is suitable for you. Thank you, uh, Mandy. So the Agrani, there's another question. They're like, how, how long do you study after the classes, after, you know, completing your lectures? It actually depends because like a way a way one student will study completely differs from how another student will study. So it depends accordingly. But let me be honest, uh, if you're capable of like finishing your stuff, you can like quickly get done. Uh, because first year when you're like initially go, there's not a lot to study. But second year is obviously tough in, uh, at GRSMU and third year is a bit more tougher. But nevertheless, you have your own timetable, so it actually differs from student to student. Yeah, thank you. So there's another question. I think, uh, Mr. Amila, you're online, right? There's a question they're asking about the yes. IMC services at Gomel, the hostel facilities provided at Gomel. Uh -huh. Uh, Gomel also, it's it's again a uh, state university. So, so uh, if the students want the hostel facilities on 100% uh, assured basis, we would be able to provide the accommodation facilities at Gomel. Gomel also, same like Vitebs and Grodno, they also have the block type accommodation. Uh, but relatively, it's a little cheaper. I mean, it's around 600 USD uh, for the entire year. Uh, but you know the accommodation wise it's like the structure wise it's it's much more similar to Vitebs and uh, Grotno since the all are state universities and uh, we provide the same IMC services for all three universities and uh, at Grotno also we do have an office which is uh, which, which was recently opened uh, and uh, Grotno also we have a representative Gomel also we have a representative and Vitebs also we have a uh, uh, office to look after the students for the entire period of uh, six years. So, I mean, like from IMC office, Sri Lanka, we arrange all your admission, uh, visa documentation, uh, everything right, without any, any hassle. And then uh, once you reach Belarus, uh, right from the uh, moment that we from the airport, uh, for the entire period of six years, we will be providing you different services, such as like uh, we help you uh, during the health emergencies. I think like Agrani must have uh, emphasis on the services that we are we have been providing uh, at uh, Grodno also, and several uh, students uh, talk from Vitex as well. And uh, so whatever the things that you come across, I mean, which you cannot do alone and which you need assistance, we are there as a representative to look after you. So our yes. specialty, our specialty is we are a direct agent of the universities. There are there are uh, organizations, a lot of organizations sending students to Belarus. There are very few official agents, right? Actually, for VTEPs, we are the only official representative appointed by the university. And uh, when you are selecting an agent, you should see whether the agent is of the agent is appointed by the university, whether the agent is an official agent. 
there are people who are acting as sub agents sub agents what they do they they just collect your documents and uh, channel through an agent in a foreign country maybe in india maybe in nepal so the university is not aware of the operation of such people in sri lanka so if you come across any problem once you reach belarus the person who are sending you the organization you are the, the sending you will not be able to assist you in that but we are a official agent appointed by the university so we are free to deal with the university directly so you are benefited and your parents actually uh, can make sure that the the kids are in, in safe hand of imc so those are the most important things and uh, mr amila there's another question from adnan do we get discounts merit discounts from the universities university wise actually uh, uh, sometimes based on the students results imc provides certain amount of deductions uh, from the service charges uh, but university wise they don't have a scholarships right but only at vitet state medical university there is a uh, scholarship scheme discount scheme offered uh, on the basis of your results now let's say if your results are extremely good during the first year there will be a discount uh, applicable when you are paying the second year fee right so your name has to be uh, listed on a thing called a merit list so the merit list maximum student listing will be around 20 20 to 25 so those 25 students the best ones will get 25% off from the annual tuition fee and the middle ones will get about uh, 20% percent uh, deduction from the annual course fee and the last few students who are listed in the merit list will get 15 percent off right uh, but grodno and gomel they don't have uh, such a scholarship scheme but course fee wise uh, they are little bit lesser than vitebs vitebs state medical university annual course fee is 4800 dollars grodno state medical university annual course fee is 4600 Gomel State Medical University annual course fee is four thousand four hundred US dollars. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Amila. So, no. I think we have Miss Marina also online. So, Miss Marina, are you online? <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, Marina, we can. Uh, yeah, sorry, Marina. Maybe, uh, Marina is our. But the video, I am still on my vacations. because uh, you know first of all i would like to say a grani uh, thanks for very warm and kind words and she told that we are like the second family uh the same thing you know i think sometimes that me and dr slava are like uh, parents of for more than 200 sri lankan children <laughs> Sometimes I feel like that. Uh, for those who are planning to come to Grodna, I would like to introduce myself. I'm student kind of coordinator in uh, Grodna, and maybe some general information about Belarus, uh, Grodna, and the university. Uh, the Republic of uh, Belarus is a small but very beautiful country. I'm really a patriotic, very patriotic. Uh, our country has a very heroic past and uh, interesting present it is situated in eastern europe uh, grodna is one of the oldest and most picturesque cities in uh, belarus and representative of many nationalities live here in peace and friendship uh, grodna state medical university is one of the leading universities in the republic of belarus around uh, 1200 foreign students from different countries study here Durasmo is uh, well known for its uh, high qualified staff, uh, well equipped buildings and modern technologies. Uh, Belarus is a very safe country. I heard from students uh, that they are worrying about a situation, uh, but I would like to say that uh, when foreign students come to Grodno, they find our city is uh, quiet and peaceful, and uh, where everything that they need is in walk distance. Despite uh, false information in uh, internet and different social networks, I would like to tell that. 
our country didn't participate and does not participate in any war activities and in conflict between Russia and Ukraine. Uh, therefore, if you decide to come to Grodna to study here, please don't be afraid that you will face with difficulties uh, because uh, we receive uh, newcomers at the airport. We help them to submit their educational documents to the university, to do medical checkup required by the university. We will help to exchange money to buy local SIM cards, uh, to open local bank account, to do their first shopping. Therefore, we help students to adopt here in Belarus. Uh, and also, we accompany students to the hospitals if they feel not unwell. Uh, that's why maybe in the end I would like to say that uh, students who study here love our country, they love Belarus, they love Krodna, they like university, and we are like uh, one big family here, always ready to help each other. Uh, and also, I would like to add that uh, if you want to see uh, Krodna, Grodna University, uh, you can uh, find our YouTube channel, uh, the name of the video study in Belarus, Grodna City, YouTube uh, ten, uh, channel of IMCAC Consortium. IMCAC Consortium, it's, we are representative of IMC in Sri Lanka. Maybe that's it, maybe some students have questions to me. I'm like a mother of 200 students. Uh, thank you very much, Ms. Marina. And to everybody who listened to Ms. Marina, she is actually uh, the representative in Grodno State Medical University for IMC education. So likely uh, how Ms. Ashwita told every one of you, we have our own offices which we maintain overseas. And at Grodno, our office is completely handled by Ms. Marina and Dr. Slava. And you heard from Ms. Marina right now. So if you have any questions towards Ms. Marina, you can bring it forward. Uh, if you want to ask in Sinhala, you can ask in Sinhala. We can basically translate it to English. So it won't be a problem. So we can invite the floor to Dr. Burhan, I guess, Ashwin. Yeah, there is a question uh, from Adnan. Is Grodno better than VSMU? <laughs> uh, sorry, once again, Grodno is better than what? Is Grodno better than VSMU? They have a question for you, Ms. Marina. <laughs> it's very interesting question. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, oh, actually, yes, like uh, Columbia University, Java University, Peradin University, right? Uh, so all our state universities, right? Right, uh, all our state uh, universities. Yeah. All our state universities, like they are just like a family, right? So sometimes the lecturers for examination, BTEPS lecturers from BTEPS, they go to Grotno, uh, lecturers from Grotno, they come to BTEPS. To right, they have conference. conference. mm -hmm. conferences. Conferences right. and uh, they work together basically. But as far as the uh, Sri Lankan students are concerned, uh, we got uh, Grotno recognized uh, uh, by the Sri Lankan Medical Council in 2015. Right. Mm -hmm. So the past our graduates from Grodno State Medical University still you don't have in Sri Lanka. But uh, if you take Vitep State Medical University, students have been going to Vitep State Medical University from 1983, Sri Lankan students. So there are a lot of Sri Lankan students who are practicing in Sri Lanka as well as any other country. So that is the difference basically. So we can't tell that, you know, this one is better than other and, and, and all these things. As far as Sri Lanka is concerned, there are, there are many graduates who passed out and, you know, uh, 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 practicing as medical doctors uh, who graduated from Vitev State Medical. Uh, Marina, you can add something if you, if you like to. Maybe better if students have some questions, I can uh, answer because I can speak uh, for a long time about everything, about apartment, about opening bank accounts, about hospitals and so on and so forth. 
I think that students uh, don't have any questions. There is one more question, Ms. Tamila. So it's from either you or Ms. Marina. They just, you know, commonly ask this question. How do we get a red degree? That is based on the performance. Actually, the next next speaker, Dr. Buran, himself mm -hmm. is a red degree holder. So when you do your examinations very well, and uh, when your average is very high, uh, just like a first class degree in Sri Lanka, so you get a red degree in Belarus. So Dr. Burhan actually, uh, Dr. Burhan, are you online? Yeah, I think uh, Dr. Burhan is online. Doctor? Okay, so so when, when he- Yeah, uh, Mr. Amila. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, yeah. okay. yeah, Dr. Burhan, they're asking what is the red degree? So you are the best person so to- So basically, uh, I think a red degree, a red degree is uh, I would say it's something where you know you get your degree with honors or distinction, but I would say mostly it's it's with distinction. So every year you will have exams, uh, and you will have something called a such old book, you know, where you know you have to get credits of every subject. So with from the first year till the sixth year, if you can maintain a GPA, again depends from university. University depends on uh, what is the average. Uh, GPA, you know, what we call it out there, rating system. So if your average uh, exam marks or rating is actually more than 8.8 uh, .8 or 8.5, right, uh, you are eligible for a red degree. So if you start from the first year, all your subjects, you need to get at least, at least nines and tens. So, you know, sometimes uh, out there you can get tens and if you've got eights, you can come, you know, as an average, it will actually increase. Uh, so that's how it is. And uh, it's not, I mean, again, a lot of people ask me, is it very difficult to actually get a red degree? It's again up to you. How much of, you know, determination that you have, how much of hard work that you're willing to put, uh, you know, you, you know, the amount of, you know, uh, self-confidence that you have with the exams. And if you do well, right, uh, you will eventually reap the benefits. Uh, so during my year, I think the average rating that they had taken was nine because my rating was 9.2. Mind you, mind you, right? This is something that I, uh, I mean, you know, I mean, normally people would not say, but I'll tell you what had happened for me. I remember in my first year for biology, right? Biology subject, I had got a six out of 10. So in, I think for everyone who's listening, if you're interested in Belarus, in Belarus, the system is out of 10, right? The marks out of 10. I had got a six. Right. But you might ask, how did I get a six and still get a red degree? Right. So because all the rest of my subjects, all the rest of the subjects in my second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year uh, was, you know, I had got very good uh, marks. Right. Which are basically nines and tens. Uh, the university asked me to repeat my biology exam. So when I was in my sixth year, I repeated my biology exam and got a nine and then got my red degree. So the university does give you chances because the university understands that, you know, if you have a subject where you've got a little bit lower, one or two subjects, you know, you still can get a red degree based on how you do the rest of your other subjects in the following years. So students who actually think, now I know a lot of students who go into their first year and then they, you know, they, they have a bad mark in biology or physics. I know a lot of students who have a bad mark in physics. And then they're like, oh, okay, now the red degree is gone. Don't think like that, right? Think of it in a positive way and think of how you can actually improve yourself. And then eventually, eventually later, uh, you will be, you know, the university will give you an opportunity of getting the red degree. So that's how it is. It's just maintaining a good GPA. I hope I answered your question. Thank you, doctor. So there's another question. Uh, how can we get scholarship for these universities? I think Ms. Tamila. Yes, I think Ms. Tamila already explained about it. Ah, all right. And, university uh, that offers a scholarship and that is also not based on your A-level results but solely based on how you perform in your university academics. So now, uh, uh, and it's to make, you know, Ms. Tamil has explained, but I think that student has not understood. So if I make it even more simpler for you to understand, you take your first year, you have, I mean, I'm just giving a very random example. So in your first year in Vitebsk State Medical University, in your first year, first semester, uh, you will have a bioorganic chemistry exam, right? So which will be out of 10. Right. And then in your first year, second semester, you'll have general chemistry, 
uh, you'll have uh, medical physics and medical biology. So you have three exams in the second semester and one exam in the first semester. So you have four exams, correct? So I, as I told you before, your marks are out of 10, correct? So if you have, now if you have, for example, got for biogenic chemistry nine, you've got general, uh, general chemistry, you've got a nine. Uh, bio, uh, medical biology and medical physics also nine. So your average is a nine. Well, an average of a nine is a very good, uh, very good exam mark. So someone might have got eights, you know. So according to that, they will actually look at who has got the highest from the whole batch, right? The people who have got the highest, like Mr. Amila said, right? The highest will actually get a twenty-five percent scholarship, right? Uh, the ones who have got a little low, maybe you know, someone has got tens, right? Two tens and two nines, the average is nine point five. So maybe that person will get a twenty-five percent scholarship for the next year. Right, and the other person has got an average of a nine might get twenty percent, and then you know, uh, you know, someone who's even lesser might have got fifteen percent. But they give a few students. So I, as far as I remember, when it was Jessica's batch, uh, the one who actually passed out last year with a red degree, I remember she telling me that there were around four to five students who every year from that batch got scholarships. So yeah. that's how it works. Yeah, uh, thank you, doctor. So there's another question from Adnan. Is it better to use the Belarus cards for transaction in uh, Belarus compared to Sri Lankan visa cards? They have to I use Sri Lankan uh, visa cards because uh, uh, they can open up an account there also. And if you're going to Belarus, uh, they have to use like uh, something like Union Pay card uh, issued by the commercial bank. And we advise the students to take open as much as possible the accounts here, maybe about four or five, and take their cards there so they can be through. But uh, now there are a lot of restrictions imposed by the Central Bank of uh, Sri Lanka as a precautionary measures to reduce the uh, foreign exchange uh, remittance. So that's why we are asking the students to take as much as uh, cards they can. About earlier, we advise the students to just take one or two cards, right? Uh, but uh, because of the prevailing situation in Sri Lanka, when you have multiple cards, if your parents can't uh, remit your tuition fee, when you can withdraw from that and pay. And we have other alternative mechanisms to send money uh, to the students, for the students. So uh, uh, that is the current situation at, at the moment. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Amila. So... There's another question. Can we apply to VSMU for this year's intake with our pending A-level results? <laughs> yeah, basically you can move the seat and you can apply and keep yourself in the pipeline. Uh, so admission is confirmed when you get your confirmed results. If you want to practice medicine in Sri Lanka, the stipulated uh, marks uh, by the Sri Lanka Medical Council is two C's and S for chemistry, biology, physics. And if you are a London A-level student, it's two C's and a D. So you have to have this minimum requirement. All right, okay. Thank you, Mr. Amila. And uh, doctor, there's another question for you. They want to know in order to, you know, work in Sri Lanka, what are the uh, procedures and how do we prepare ourselves for the ERPM exam? Okay, so the, the simple question I think is that if, I mean, all of these students, if they're going to Belarus, right, I mean, uh, based on, based on like Mr. Amila said, you need to have the, the pre-required A-level results, right? Only if you're coming to Sri Lanka, you need to have your two C's and one S, right? Uh, there are different, different pathways, which I'm not going to stress on in this webinar, but if you are interested that you can always speak to Mr. Amina and he will actually help you out on that, right? So if you are thinking of coming to Sri Lanka, you need to have two C's and one S, that is biology, physics, and chemistry, right? You need to have biology, physics, and chemistry, uh, two C's and one S. It doesn't matter if you, what, what subject you have an S, right? Uh, after you finish your uh, six years there, right, you will have to come to Sri Lanka and sit for something called a X16 exam, right? Early it was called the X16, now it is called the ERPM exam. Right. Uh, so the ERPM exam uh, consists of four parts, part A, part B, part C and part D. Part A and part D is actually an MCQ exam, which consists of subjects of medicine, uh, gene and ops, pediatrics and surgery. Part D consists of uh, forensics and community medicine. Actually, part A, there's another part. Psychiatry is also involved. Now, I, during my time, we didn't have it. Now they have put another subject, psychiatry, which is just a 30, it's an MCQ paper of 30 true false questions. 
right? After you pass Part A and Part Actually, after you pass Part A, you are eligible to sit for Part B and Part C, which is a viva exam where you know you are given a designated hospital, uh, and you know you know you know you are giving a designated roll number, and then you have to go and give a viva, right? That is a oral exam for general surgery, medicine, and pediatrics. If you get through that, and then Part C is actually the emergency viva, where you know they actually you know have a medical emergency and a surgical emergency, where they talk about emergencies and how you would manage. Right, so when you get through all of that, you are eligible to going for your internship. So at that time, you are given something called a provincial registration. You are given a provincial registration uh, in, uh, to practice medicine in Sri Lanka, and then you will get your permanent registration when you complete your internship. After which, it is satisfied by the consultants who you worked for. Right, they'll have to as soon as you finish your internship, they will say, okay. I, I, you know, there is a file. You get a sort of a diary where you have the consultants will sign whenever you have completed it. So if they think that you know you are fit enough to go outside in Sri Lanka and work as a doctor in the private sector, they will sign and they will give you. And as soon as you hand that over to the Sri Lankan Medical Council, you will get something called a permanent registration, right? And uh, then you are eligible to work in Sri Lanka. Then the 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 way that you go forward. uh depends on what you want to do in the future either you want to stay here and you want to specialize in sri lanka or you can go abroad right so that is the pathway in sri lanka but that being said knowing the situation in sri lanka i would advise every student that goes to belarus to have different different sort of alternatives coming to sri lanka is a good option but always look at other alternatives think about other countries that you could also go to which is the beauty about going to belarus remember going to belarus does not necessarily mean that you need to come to only sri lanka and practice medicine you can go to dubai you can go to i mean that is the middle east you can go to europe you can go to uk you can go to usa you can go to australia all those pathways are available for you but the only problem is you need to make sure that you figure out a pathway the moment you go into university you can't wait last minute and then decide okay no i don't want to go to sri lanka i'll go to us you know because every pathway has a sort of preparation that you need to do right because of the current situation in this country i would advise every student to think twice about different different alternatives rather than sticking with one plan i think with covid uh, with the current economic crisis right i think it has taught us one thing and it is always to figure out different different sort of uh, plans with regard to your future right so think about all of that and uh, decide what you need to do so i mean i can't you know take my time in explaining the the us part of the uk part of the europe part of the uh, middle east part of the australian part of because everything is very very complicated but if you are interested uh, you can always visit uh, our office and you know we are free i think mr amila is i think very very good when it comes to you know explaining to you all the different different alternative options that you all have with regard to your future which, which is the most important focus of imc is it's not about making sure that you graduate and that's it no we want to help you figure out a way so that you can actually be practicing medicine in a particular country it's not about just you know you going to belarus and that's it right imc ic takes a lot of uh, a lot of effort in making sure that you guys actually finish off as well as you have a place where you can actually settle off and work as a practicing doctor so that's very very important but for that you need to actually figure out what you want to do yeah uh, thank you doctor i think that's it if there is anything else mr amila can add yeah so yes and also ashita small thing now for everybody who wants to know how yeah. university support in the yeah. erpm exam um, we have uh, interviewed uh, a few medical students I, in fact uh, the this time of course for the year 2022 the island rank number 1 was produced by uh, witted state medical university in belarus dr jessica pereira in fact we have uh, five more other doctors who were selected into the merit list so we have island number 1 island number 7 9th 40th and 50th uh, who were equally produced by witted state medical university so i am dropping the link to our youtube channel over here i want each and every participant over here to click on to this link uh, drop in your uh, click on to the subscribe button so you will be notified when we upload a new video with one of these doctors so we already have two uploaded on the website uh, on the youtube uh, on the youtube channel uh, tomorrow again we will be uploading um, 
a, a very, I would say, a very lengthy discussion with Dr. Chitikshana Jayasekara, who was ranked number ninth. Her interview definitely speaks about how the Belarusian education system, more specifically how Vitip State Medical University supported in preparation to the Sri Lanka's uh, ERPM exam. So if you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll be notified when the video is uploaded. And uh, latest other medical content will also be equally updated. So if you can subscribe to it, I think you will be able to be uh, updated with our latest uploads. Ashwita, over to yeah, you. Yeah, thank you, Mandy. So uh, the similar questions, you know, what they asked from Dr. Burhan, they're asking again, what are the procedures on uh, working in a foreign country? Does IMC help with the exams and the procedures to move to a foreign country? So, Mr. Amila, any opinions regarding this? Uh, actually, uh, like just uh, Dr. Burhan rightly said, uh, different countries have uh, different examination. For example, if they want to go to UK, there's an exam called PLAP. And after 2024, that will be replaced uh, with an exam called UKMLA. And uh, if they are going to uh, go to USA, uh, they need to do USMLE examination. And if it is Australia, AMC. If, if it is New Zealand, it is AMC as well. So um, IMC tied up with different examination trainers who train specifically uh, the, the who trains the students specifically for the the particular licensing examination. So we can help you out. We can guide you. Like Dr. Burhan said, I mean it's a very complicated thing to explain you each and every examination, the structural nature of each and each and every examination. We are hoping to uh, do another presentation like this, a discussion like this regarding the foreign examination training. So you all can uh, subscribe our YouTube video and uh, we'll be uploading time to time videos, right? We will definitely can, uh, we definitely can guide you uh, towards like achieving your objective. If you want to become a doctor in UK, Australia, USA, uh, Sri Lanka, everywhere. And uh, if, you, if you are actually planning to go abroad without coming to Sri Lanka, uh, number one, Thing is the internship. Number one thing is the internship. So Belarus uh, being uh, state universities, right? Uh, so uh, you can get, you can obtain an internship uh, in the state sector uh, of hospitals. So that will be recognized worldwide because like in order to be a recognized internship that should be done in the government sector. So all the Belarusian universities are government universities. So you can stay back another one year, one more year and complete your internship if you are going abroad without coming to Sri Lanka. So if you your plan is not to come to Sri Lanka, but to go abroad, Belarus is a fantastic destination which uh, provides you uh, 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 positive things for your career pathway, especially the internship. Today also, I, I got a call from uh, uh, one of the students who studied at uh, 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 one of the universities in Russia. So because they don't guarantee internships. So that student wants to go to Belarus to do the internship because like uh, she has failed to obtain the internship in that particular Russian university. And uh, now planning to go to Belarus and do the internship for her long journey to uh, become a doctor in the UK. Yeah, um, thank you, Mr. Amila. So are there any more questions which you all uh, wanted to ask from Mr. Amila or Dr. Burhan? So if there are you know, not any more questions, we can uh, wrap this session up. Yeah, and also Ashwita, to everybody who's online, uh, yeah. since you all are inquisitive to know about the options available overseas, um, so Mr. Amila is available until this Friday for uh, online consultations. So please do contact Ms. Ashwita and book your appointments. We are available from 8 o'clock in the morning up until 3.30 in the evening. So please contact Ms. Ashwita today itself and book your appointments. He is again free from Wednesday to Friday. I think tomorrow he is a bit packed up, but uh, we will try to uh, put you in into one of the time slots. So please do contact Ms. Ashwita to get your appointments booked because it's completely free of charge. And you can get all the needed consultations personalized for your uh, personalized for your decision making process over yeah, to that, you Ashita. yeah that will be because like we can uh, in detail talk about like your each and every need 
and we can customize the discussion according to your needs. So uh, this is just a mass uh, uh, explanation. This is just to get an idea. So when you fix a personal appointment, we can discuss uh, maybe one or one and a half hours and uh, uh, you can get your exact information what you want. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mandy, and thank you, Mr. Miller. So if you all want to have your individual counseling sessions with uh, Mr. Miller, you all can contact me or either Miss Mandy and arrange a time slot for you all. So are there any more questions which uh, you all want to ask? I think that should be it, Ashwita. Yeah, uh, so I think we'll end this session from now. So. Okay, uh, thank you very much, Arpani. Thank you very much, Tarushi, Dr. Burhan. Everyone, thanks a lot uh, for taking your time. Really appreciate that. Thank you, students, for participating. And You're very welcome, family. Yeah. Take care. Good night. Thank you, Bye -bye. Thank you Agrani, and uh, thank you, Tarushi, too. Okay.